Hi, my name is Katherine Fisher, and this is my leadership video, Transforming into a Leader. Through this presentation, I hope to highlight my journey to become a leader. Something I really value from this class was the outlook that we are constantly developing our leadership skills. I value viewing leadership as a process. And as I look back on my first day of undergraduate college, I am amazed to think of how far I have come and the transformation I have had since that moment. So through this presentation, I plan to highlight key experiences that have shaped the leader that I am today. So from this, the leadership style I most identify with is transformational leadership. Nordhaus explains in his text on page 162 that transformational leadership is the process whereby a person engages with others and creates a connection that raises the level of motivation and morality in both the leader and the follower. I love how transformational leadership emphasizes engagement and connection, because I think it is through establishing a deep connection with one's followers that one is able to accomplish more than expected. I also love how this style emphasizes that both the leader and the follower can be transformed through this process. So now I want to provide a general summary of my DISC assessment and then demonstrate specific skills and how that relates to my leadership style. So the first category, decisiveness, I scored moderately low, which demonstrates that I'm very detail-oriented and I'm a very thorough and deliberate decision maker. I like to weigh the pros and cons before coming to a solution. The second category, interactive, I scored very high, which demonstrates that I am outgoing, optimistic, and love working with different personality styles. For the third category, stabilizing, I scored moderately high as well, demonstrating that I'm consistent, I value stability, and I'm very loyal to the groups that I'm working with. Lastly, the cautious category, I also scored relatively high, which shows that I value structure, I'm very analytical, and I have a high precision to detail. My first skill I want to highlight in this video I termed walking the walk. In the decisiveness category of the DISC assessment, it states that I prefer to lead by setting an example, not by outright instructing others. This means that I value being a role model to others. As a leader, I think it is important to possess what Kuzner and Posner state as modeling the way for one's followers which to me means living up to one's commitments and values. A great example of this was when I was a freshman RA at Creighton University. In order to instill the mission and values of the university into my floor, I had to set the example for my women of what that tangibly looks like. My hope was that I was being a role model for them and that they felt empowered to adopt those same values. Also, by being receptive to their individual needs, my hope was to empower them to establish their own voice and identity founded on integrity as they transition to become an independent adult. My second trait I want to highlight is my ability to be a social butterfly. According to the interactive category of my DISC assessment, I am very outgoing and adaptable to a variety of different personalities. When working in any group setting, one is constantly interacting with a variety of different people. In order to truly see the merit of each individual, one needs to be able to adapt to work with each person's unique personality. The DIS also states that I am very outgoing and optimistic, which I think is essential to motivate and inspire others to action. When I transferred to UNLV, I had the opportunity to be a founding leader for the Kinesiology Club on campus. In order to create a new organization, it was essential to utilize inspirational motivation to communicate expectations and build others up in order to foster organizational identity. With this, it was important to create a positive, optimistic environment that encouraged others to become involved and feel that they brought something new to the organization. By instilling a sense of belonging and community, we were able to reach our goals and plan amazing events. The last trait I want to highlight is my ability to be a tactical team player, 
I believe this has been evident through the many various group projects I have been a part of while at Loma Linda University. As stated previously in the cautious dimension of my DIS assessment, I value structure, order, and precision. Venice and Nanis in our Norhouse texts explain, leaders need to ensure their followers know their distinct roles and understand how they contribute to the greater purpose of the organization. In group projects, I have always tried to ensure equal distribution of work through delegation and creating structure. By communicating high expectations, we have been able to produce high quality work. In relation to the stabilizing component of the DIS assessment, it states that I am very supportive and sincere. In group projects, I always try to create a team spirit through being an active listener and offer support when needed. It is important in group projects to be considerate of each individual's needs. I always try to listen and value the work of other people and to allow each group member to make decisions so their strengths can be recognized. By catering to each individual's strengths and work, my groups have been able to create projects we feel very proud of. Now through my skills, I've highlighted aspects of my leadership style, but now I want to delve deeper into how I represent each factor of transformational leadership. Firstly, for inspirational motivation, as stated previously, I am always very optimistic and I try to empower others to be a part of the community through increasing their internal motivation. I also strive to ensure that each individual believes they are valued and a key player in the group. For idolized influence, I am confident in my abilities and I have a strong sense of who I am as a person, which is something I have consistently worked on for the last eight years. My goal is to assist others with establishing their own self-efficacy through demonstration and being a role model. For individualized consideration, I'm very supportive and I pay close attention to the individualized needs in order for others to establish their own strengths. Lastly, this is something I still really need to work on, which is intellectual stimulation, but I try to promote creativity and respect of other people's viewpoints and allow those viewpoints to shape my own growth. A key example of when I utilize transformational leadership is when I spearheaded our soda event, OT Palooza. This event was a fundraiser to provide opportunities for professional development. I've been blessed for the last two years with the opportunity to be a part of SOTA as the student delegate for OTAC. Firstly, when planning this event, it was essential to inspire others to believe in the mission of the fundraiser. By doing this, it promoted others to want to be a part of this planning process. Secondly, I tried to allow each committee the autonomy to be creative and make the event their own. I was amazed with the contribution each committee gave to the event. Lastly, I tried to consistently give encouragement and recognition to each person that was a part of the process in order to promote team morale and spirit. All in all, the event turned out to be a huge success. I also felt that I was significantly transformed by this process because it allowed me and my fellow classmates to leave a mark on the OT department at LLU through developing this event that can be continued to support future cohorts to come. In relation to my strengths within transformational leadership, I am very encouraging and reliable, which motivates others to action. Also, within inspirational motivation, I challenge others to strive to go beyond what is expected, which often can elicit high outcomes. Secondly, in relation to individualized consideration, I am very people-oriented, and I try to ensure everyone's voice is heard when working in a group. I also strive to push others to establish their own identity within the organization, as referenced with my example of planning OT Palooza. With this acknowledgement of strengths, it is equally if not more important to evaluate areas of improvement. As stated previously, I believe I am constantly growing and refining my leadership skills. With this, a key weakness I have is my need to be in control. Intellectual stimulation within transformational leadership highlights the importance of allowing others to be innovative and creative. I have a tendency to not let go of my control due to being over-analytical and a perfectionist. Secondly, I struggle with change. I have a hard time with what Kuznis and Posner would coin challenging the process. Key ways I can improve my weaknesses are by viewing my mistakes as learning opportunities, not getting so caught up in the details, acknowledging the strengths and abilities of others, and embracing innovation. 
With this, it's also important to analyze the strengths and weaknesses of the transformation in the leadership style itself. Some strengths include its emphasis on the interaction between the leader and the follower, its emphasis on individualized needs and values of the follower, and it has strong evidence to support it's an effective leadership approach. Some weaknesses of this style include it's difficult to conceptualize, it oftentimes overlaps with other leadership styles, and it's at risk for being abused. There are many instances where I felt the need to take on an adaptive leadership style. Adaptive leadership highlights the importance of mobilizing others to find solutions to complex problems. Challenges arise in any leadership setting. When I was an RA, I utilized this approach all the time with my residents. During roommate disputes, I had to create a holding environment to encourage each woman to talk out their disagreement and come to a compromise. Through this process of analyzing my leadership style and developing my vision statement, I have had the opportunity to reflect on my transformation as a leader since my first day of college. I am proud of the person I've become, and I'm excited to continue to develop into the person I want to be. With this, my vision statement reads as follows. I will answer my call to serve my family and community. I will empower and heal others through occupational therapy. I will establish a holistic practice through always acknowledging every aspect of an individual's wellness. I will endlessly strive to demonstrate Christ's love in my actions and words. I will relinquish my anxieties and doubts through embracing my true self and acknowledging I am made perfect through His image. My vision statement relates to my transformational leadership style because as an OT, I feel called to transform my clients, which involves empowering and instilling internal motivation in them to reach their goals. With this, I hope to encourage my clients to find and use their strengths as they strive for autonomy and independence. Lastly, within my leadership style, it is important to acknowledge that I am continuously being transformed into a new person through diligently serving my mission through Christ. My first goal for reaching my vision statement addresses my call to serve through occupational therapy. I have a strong desire to work in a neuro-based setting with individuals with degenerative diseases upon graduation. With this, I aspire to provide the highest quality of care to these individuals by promoting evidence-based practice through ongoing research. From this, my first goal is to obtain my doctorate in occupational therapy, emphasizing research in neurorehabilitation within the next five years. Actions that I need to take in order to reach this goal is first, obtaining my licensure in OT by passing my boards and graduating with my MOT degree next June, gaining clinical experience through working in a neurorehabilitative setting upon receiving my licensure for at least two years, reading three research articles a month to continue to keep up with evidence-based practice, and establish a mentorship with someone who can challenge me and support my goals of obtaining higher education. I designed my second goal in order to continue to promote my spiritual and emotional health as I fulfill my calling through occupational therapy. This goal states, I will participate in three spiritual activities every week in order to continue my quest for self-love and acceptance through nourishing my soul. Some activities I plan to do to reach this goal are to write in my vulnerability journal at least two times a week, read poetry daily before going to sleep, waking up early every morning with a prayer and devotional, and to continue to attend my weekly Bible study. In conclusion, I cannot wait to influence others through the power of occupational therapy. I am grateful to my family, friends, and faculty who have supported me and challenged me through this process. I know that I am still a work in progress, but I cannot wait to see how God utilizes me in this world. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video where I highlight my journey and the key experiences that transformed me into the leader I am today. I see the work of your hands Galaxies spinning a heavenly dance Oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming And I hear the sound of your voice 
All at once it's a gentle and thundering noise, oh God. I 